thought I could build a roller coaster in my backyard, but I took the first step. Every journey begins with the first step. I took it, it was a fun project. It wasn't really that hard and uh, I was able to do it. Um, it's been so successful, it's been so fun for, for all the kids and the grandkids. Um, we've just had a blast with it. Uh, it's been very popular. It's probably the only one in the state of Louisiana. So you're probably thinking, well, I don't have a big hill in my backyard, so I can't build a roller coaster. Well, that's not true. You just have to start out at an elevation of at least eight feet, six inches. So that's not, not hard. You just take some uh, four by fours posts, build you a platform that's eight feet. You see this point right here? This point is eight feet, six inches lower than the starting point. So that's the most elevation that you would ever need. And I'm gonna show you exactly what the elevation of this point is in regards to the starting point. And I already told you this one's eight feet, six inches. And then the end, the end point up there, it's gotta be the same elevation as the starting point. That way they don't go flying off the end. Now, my video uh, uh, got like 12 million views of the kid going down the roller coaster towards the lake. Everyone thought he was gonna just fly off the end and uh, land in the lake. <laughs> but uh, it never happened. The kids had a blast. It was, it was. So I researched out uh, how much some of this material would cost. It's not that expensive. Uh, I used Schedule 80, one and a half inch PVC conduit. Now you can use regular PVC pipe. Um, I use Schedule 80, which is a lot stronger than Schedule 40. Now the reason that people don't use the Schedule 80 is because you have to bend it. And, and uh, God showed me a really easy way to bend the pipe. And it doesn't involve heating hot sand in your wife's oven, which she strictly forbade. <laughs> but uh, I used boiling water and I devised a form um, that went this way and I one end's a little higher than the other and you pour boiling water in one side and you gradually um, bend, the, bend the pipe down and then you, when you cool it, it stays stays bent. It, it was an ingenious method. Um, this uh, PVC pipe will bend at 180 degrees. Well, boiling water is 212, so it works. Uh, the cost of uh, this pipe is, um, you buy, to find Schedule 80, you usually have to go to an electrical supply store. It's called a conduit, electrical conduit. Well, that's, it's pretty expensive. It's $28 per 10 foot piece. And you will need 13 pieces, which would be $364. If you use Schedule 40, well, Home Depot sells Schedule 40 uh, PVC pipe for $6.41 a piece. So that would be $83. You could go that way. I, uh, I wanted to make it extra strong, so I used a Schedule 80, because I thought I would be riding on it myself. <laughs> uh, mostly we've just had little kids ride on it because they had so much fun, and I hadn't really tested it for 200 pounds. But we have run into this thing. My wife ran into it a couple times with the riding lawnmower. And I didn't tell her, but I ran into it a couple times with the riding lawnmower. But it is so strong, it just holds, holds together. You will need 600 number 10, three and a half inch deck screws. 
screws are used to uh, hold the track to the boards. Now the deck screws that I use, they they actually countersink themselves, um, so you don't have to have a countersink drill. And if they stick up a little too much, I would take a grinder and grind them down. That's one thing you might want to get is a grinder. Use a grinder with a grinding disc and get a uh, cutting disc on it. You'll need that. That grinder is the uh, best tool. I never had one before I started this project. Uh, I love it now. I use it for all kinds of things. And it's really cheap, like 20 some dollars. Let's talk about the elevations again. The first dip is going to be six feet, one inches below the starting level. Then it comes up here. This is going to be four feet, six inches below the starting level. This is the negative G hill right here. When they hit this, they get negative G's. Then they come back down and the lowest part on this hill is eight feet six inches below the start elevation and then it goes up and this is what slows you down and stops you and that has to be equal to the beginning elevation so they don't go flying off into the neighbor's yard or the lake all right the uh, the track is made out of seven segments. The first segment is 48 inches long. It's straight. The next segment is 59 inches long and it's curved. All the curved segments have a radius of 97 inches. And I'm going to show you how to bend them to that radius. So the second one is a curve and it's 59 inches. The third segment is straight and it's 74 inches. Then the fourth segment is curved and it's 105 inches. Then the fifth segment is curved and it's 115 inches. And then the sixth segment down here is curved and it's 115 inches. Then the final segment is just slightly curved you don't need uh, to bend that one. And it's 220 inches. Now the length I'm talking about here is the length that you would measure along the, along the pipe. Just to be clear, it's, it's the arc length, the length of the arc. All right, the width of the track. I made my track to be sixteen inches. Right here, it's sixteen inches wide. I think it was actually fifteen and three quarters. You can make it however wide you want. Uh, I'm, I, would, I went a little bit wider because I was afraid people would tip, o tip it over and fall off the side, but I don't think that's really a worry. I worry about safety quite a bit. The, uh, you need to make sure that all your ties, these are called the ties right here, that they're all the same length. So I made a, uh, a sample 
uh, template tie and then I cut a whole bunch of them exactly the same length. You can use a skill saw, a chop saw, whatever. Um, the next thing you have to do, see how, how nice the, um, the joint is right there between the tie and the pipe? Well, that's a two inch, a two inch hole, a two inch um, hole saw that kind of cuts, cuts off the end. And uh, you can kind of offset the hole a little bit so that this goes down a little lower on the, on the pipe. Um, but it's not really necessary. You just want the wheels not to hit on this pipe, but the wheels are going to be riding on the top of this uh, pipe right here. Now you're probably going to want to use a uh, drill press to uh, drill down the edges of those those boards. Uh, I had a friend that uh, loaned me his. Then this is how the, the screws, uh, you would drill the pilot holes and then you'd put these uh, screws through uh, through here, and you put them to where the the rollers aren't gonna aren't gonna hit on the screws, but they're kind of recessed in there anyway. But see, I I put them up through that way into the into the tie, and uh, sometimes I would put put them this way. You can do that also, and I buried it. See on the um, where the where the pipes meet. I figured that was the, the weakest point of everything. <laughs> so of course I over-engineered it. I put, you know, extra ties in here. Um, I'll tell you about how, how to join these. There's a little, there's a smaller pipe inside here that you cement in. But we'll go over that in a, in a while. Okay, let's talk about Joining the rails, joining the pipe, this side and this side. This is the other part that I have developed a trick that will save you. Inside this joint is a inch and a quarter schedule 40 pipe. Remember, this is an inch and a half. Okay, and this pipe is like four or five inches long. So um, what you have to do is take your grinder, the cutting blade, maybe the grinding blade, I don't know, but you need to cut a slot through here about that big. Pretty big for a schedule, if you're using schedule 80. Now, then, then what you're going to do is you're going to cement this together with uh, PVC cement. And then you're going to put, well, I put screws in here to really hold this thing together. Because I always figured this was the weakest link. Um, so anyway, once you get your, uh, you see how this, this um, one and a quarter it doesn't, it isn't really gonna go into this one and a half very well. So, uh, if it, not at all. But you gotta cut that slot in there. And then it still doesn't wanna go in. So what you need to do is boil a pot of water and stick that five, four or five inch pipe into the boiling water until it kind of softens. Then once it softens, you can get it inside this other pipe and cement it in there. And uh, once you got it inserted, you'll leave half of it sticking out and then you'll, you'll put your next section onto that next half. Now I was able to do this, you know, all by myself. I'm gonna show you the track supports now. This was just a, a stand that I had from the zip line. But uh, if you want something to be stable, use a triangle. That makes triangles make things strong. So 
you can see how I joined everything together. Um, these, uh, these supports just rest on the ground right here. Um, and down here, these, this support right here has some rebar driven into the ground. Uh, that's to keep it from moving moving forward down the hill when they uh, when they hit this uprising it puts a lot of force going down the hill and uh, also that's the reason for this uh, 4x4 right here that this 4x4 is cemented into the ground that and then see how everything's tied to it that's that's going to keep things from moving and uh, basically there's a straight two by four going down the whole length of it and then everything's tied to it and of course the length of those ties uh, the vertical ties varies uh, here's an this one here is also rebarred to the ground and then we come on down here and uh, I, had, I had to go up up high to uh, stop everything and, and the, that's where they start heading backwards but see I got quite a few triangles in here uh, and then this 4x4 on the end is uh, heavily cemented into the ground uh, just bend it a little at first and then start putting the hot water in it. This end over here is a little bit lower. I, I took a string and I made this to be 97 inches, a 97 inch arc right there. So I hope you will build a roller coaster and be a, be a hero. I need to give credit to Paul Gray. He literally wrote the book, designed, this concept about this coaster right here. Uh, all I did was simplify some of the construction methods. I think maybe made it a little stronger. But he's the one that sparked the imagination of many coaster builders and went on and did even bigger and better coasters with turns and all kinds of things. So thank you, Paul for all that you've done for the coaster builders of the world. The next video will show you how to build the cart. Hope to see you soon. Good luck. Take the first step and do it. If you have any questions, uh, comments, suggestions, whatever, just, just put them on the uh, comment section I will answer you as, as best I can. Good luck. All right, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. What, what planet am I going first? Oh, well, you want to go to the moon? Yeah, sure. You start right. there, and there are the aliens on there. Uh, yes. Where's pistols? <laughs> Hand me a pistol. Here you go. All right. All right, go get some aliens on okay, the moon. Okay. I'll bring you one. Five, bring four, one. three, two, one, zero. Last off!